Okay, so hopefully everything is going uh, smoothly with Old Rugged Cross. I thought we would start looking at a, a new song. This one will uh, be involved more with the right hand picking. Um, thought we might explore a little bit more of that sort of thing. The other thing I want to do is really break this down musically, so there's going to be a lot of looking at the paper. Um, and trying to understand exactly what's on the paper. So I'm just basically going to go through this song and I'm going to explain it um, musically in all of its different aspects. So just, um, you know, hope, I assume that you print these sheets and then you can look at them or hold them in your hand. Uh, but initially, um, you know, I want to really go through this and, and talk about it. And you can have your guitar in hand like I do while we're talking about it. So let's go right to the beginning. We see that there's two sharps, which means that this song is in the key of D. We see that it's in 4-4, four, four, four beats to a measure. We see that there is a pickup of two notes, a D note and a B note. The B is also the open B, but we're going to play it in this song. We're going to play it here on the fourth fret of the, uh, of the uh, G string. So the first note is D, second note is B. And what I want you to do is just know that, just learn that. Let's back up a minute and see what notes this song encompasses. It doesn't encompass many notes, once again, which is why it's useful for this sort of, this sort of lesson. So if we were to play A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G, A. So if you wanted to tab that, it would be 2, 4, 2, 3, 5, 2, 3, 5. A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G, A. So we saw the two sharps because we're in the key of D. So that's a D scale, but it's not starting, we're not starting it on the D note, we're starting it on the A note, which means it's a mode of the D scale. It's the fifth mode, D, E, F sharp, G, A, we're starting on the A, so it's the fifth mode of the D scale. So what you want to do in preparation for this is just play through that and really um, lock in what those notes are. A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G, A. Quiz yourself. Uh, just name notes and play them. D, E, B, A, F sharp, C sharp, G. A, A, starts on A, ends on A. That's an octave, right? So you want to have that well in mind. You want to be able to look at the notes on the page and make that connection with the fretboard. So I have my hand in second position. And I know that I have my A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G, A. I know what those look like on the musical staff. I've taken that all in at this point. So I look at the first note, I see that it's a D. I know where that is. I just know if I was a blind person and I have my um, hand in second position and I could feel that that was the second string, then I would know that that was the D. And over here is the B, and I'm not looking. So I have the D and the B, and then it goes to the A. So let's look at that first measure. We have four notes. We know we have four beats in that measure. 
we have four notes. We have A, B, D, and A. The timing in that measure is one, two, three, and we see that the D note is dotted, so that gets B3, plus it gets half of the next beat, so it gets four, the first half of four. So it's one, two, three, four, and. The last A note is the end of four. One, two, three, four, and. So from the beginning we have one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and. We look at the next measure. We have a B, a D, and then another D, and then a B. The timing in that measure is one, two, three, four, and. So we have one, two, three, four, and. That D note, half note, gets two beats. It gets beats number two and three. One, two, three, four, and. We get to the next measure. We have A, B, D, B, and A. The timing there is one, two, three, and four. 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 I'm going to play that first line. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, and four. We get to the next line. We're back to the B note. So you can see there is not a lot of note choice in this song, which is why I'm using it. Um, once again, we do this kind of thing occasionally, and I don't really know what sort of progress you're making with it, but I'm going to keep doing it every now and then until you tell me don't do it, because I think it's important. Or you can say, I really understand that at this point, and we can move on to something a little more complicated. Either way. So we get to line two, we have a B note, and we see that it's a dotted half note, so it gets three beats. And then at the end of the measure, we have a D and a B, and that would be beat number four. So that measure is one, two, three, four, and. One, two, three, four, and. Let's just look at the next two measures. Let's look at the timing. We see, because the timing in both measures is the same. We have one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and. I'll play that from the beginning. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and. We get to the third line, first measure. We see that those are all quarter notes. They'll get one beat apiece. The notes are F sharp, E, B, uh, D, and B. One, two, three, four. Very simple. We get to the um, last measure in that uh, first section because we can see there's going to be a repeat. We have beat number one and the first half of beat number two. One, two, and. And then we have beat number three. And then we have four and. So we have one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and. And then it repeats. Back to the beginning without the pickup because the pickup is outside of the repeat mark. 
So uh, from the beginning, going through uh, to the first ending, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and So now what I'm going to do, and you can be playing along with me um, as this is coming to you, but the main thing is, is I want you to be able to relate to the music on the page and channel that understanding into your fingers so that your focus is on the page and that you're able to make the connections in the left and right hand without having to look at them. Okay, so here we go from the beginning. I won't be looking at either hand, I'll be looking at the page alone. And this time what I'm going to do is, um, let's look at the second ending. Uh, so the second ending is very much like the first ending. The timing is the exact same, except the last two notes are different. The last two notes are F sharp and G, which will take us into the B section of the song. So here I go from the beginning. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, and four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, four, and one, two, taking us into the next section of the song. So um, just a little bit uh, before we get into the second section, just a little bit of background. You can see up in the corner it says old time. So this is an old, uh, possibly old American tune, early American, um, or possibly something from uh, across the sea, perhaps. Uh, I'm not sure. It might, might have its roots in Ireland or Scotland or something like that. Uh, but it's an old-timey tune that has been uh, adopted and welcomed into the bluegrass scene. Um, you can find lots of examples of this song uh, online, generally played quite quickly and uh, often in a much more complicated manner um, than the than the basic melody. Sometimes they'll start with the basic melody and then really start to dress it up which is what our plan is going forward. But uh, first we wanna be familiar with the song and once again, because of the nature of the song, use it as a vehicle for uh, better musical understanding. So getting into the B section of the song, we start on the high A and we can see that the timing is one, two, three, four, and. Let's look at the timing throughout that entire line there, that entire fourth line. Just let's look at it and understand it. We have one, two, three, four, and, one, two, three, four, and, and then one, two, three, four. So that's pretty simple. We see that the notes are A, F sharp, E, D, E, F sharp, E, D, F sharp, G, A, F sharp, E, D. So that would sound like this, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. We get to the next line. <clears throat> we have three B notes, an F sharp and a G. 
The timing is one, two, and three, four, and. One, two, and three, four, and. One, two, and three, four, and. And then we see that the next three measures are the exact same as the three measures that we played previously. Make that observation. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. Timing-wise, they're, the, timing they're, they're the exact same. The uh, notes are, are, in fact, a little different when we get to the third measure. Um, <clears throat> let's look at the last measure in that section, and uh, then we'll play that entire section. So we have an A, a B, an A, an F sharp, and a G, and the timing is one, two, and three, four, and. One, two, and three, four, and. So if I were to play that entire B section with the repeats, it would sound like this. One, two, three, four, and. So there's a breakdown of the entire song. So once again, in review, what do you want to do? Um, depending on how much of this you already understand, um, <clears throat> you could take different approaches. But um, let's just assume that you need to kind of take this right from the start. So I would play that uh, mode of the D scale. look at it and think to myself what those notes are A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G, A. Just play through it a little bit up and down, back and forth. And then, like I said, maybe quiz yourself on just note names. G, C sharp, B, A, A, F sharp, E, B, E, B, just have that well in mind. Keep in mind we're only dealing with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's not even an entire phone number with the uh, area code. So um, put it in perspective. It's not a lot of notes. And then I would look at those notes musically on the page and find them. And if you need to like do a little separate tab of just writing out that scale, and writing the notes above that, each of those notes, do that. And the reason I'm not going to write that part out is because if you need to do that, I want you to do it because if you do it, it'll, it'll drive it, you know, drive it into you a little bit more effectively if you actually write it in and think about what you're writing. Okay, so you could write that A note and put the write the name of it above it, A, and then the B, C sharp, D, and so on and so forth. And uh, just to make sure that you really have that well in mind. When you have that well in mind, then go to the page. Um, maybe just look, think through it, look at the timing. If you need to write the timing on the page, go right ahead and do that. Nothing wrong with that. And better if you don't need to, but if you need to, do it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a uh, just a play along um, without any counting, just so that you have a play along, uh, a clean play along to do uh, when you get to that point. 
So I will count it in and I'll start on beat number four. I'll play with the repeats to the end. So this song is basically A-A-B-B. -B. That would be the form, A-A-B-B, -B, twice through the A section, twice through the B section is typically how this is played. One, two, three. That's one time through, and then uh, what we will do is we will turn this into an arrangement. The other thing um, that's good about this particular song is I know that there are backing tracks on YouTube. So once you become familiar with the melody, you can uh, find one of the Angeline the Baker backing tracks and uh, play along with it. It'll be really, really good practice. And uh, if it's too fast, you know, you can change the speed. You can adjust the speed um, <clears throat> on the videos. I'm sure you're well aware of that. I think you're actually the one who told me about that years ago. And I didn't even realize that you could do that on the videos. So um, continue to work on Old Rugged Cross if you need that. <clears throat> continue to play it. <coughs> pardon me, edit your repertoire along with those other songs. Always spend a certain amount of time, I do every day, uh, or when I do play, always spend a certain amount of time playing uh, some of the songs that you already know. This way you develop a repertoire and uh, the stuff you learn doesn't just go by the wayside. So you always want to spend some time playing um, the old stuff as you're learning the new stuff. Um, so there you go. If you need any more direction or clarification on what we're doing with this, um, you know to ask for that and you know that I will supply it. If I don't hear anything, then I just assume that um, I was clear enough and that you're able to uh, do something with this lesson. Okay, have a good one and we'll talk to you later.